This box has a chainsaw mill inside of it. Go figure. I've had this thing for uh, a couple months. Well, maybe not a couple months, but at least a month now. Have not used it because I haven't had time to use it, which is kind of weird because I don't even have a job. We're gonna use it today and see if it actually is as good as all the YouTube videos say. This thing literally cost 20 bucks. It was the cheapest one I could find, and to me they all look exactly the same. I don't think there's a difference. They all come from the same factory in China. Comes with a level. There we go. Wow, that's a lot of hardware with uh, no real instructions. It's got a guide, but it's only got a guide for the assembled stuff. So that's awesome. Don't honestly see how this is supposed to work. I guess it's the offset off the edge. Like that's like a two inch slab. So you can't even do three quarter then. You're probably gonna want some Loctite on these. It seems like every single review for these things on Amazon is a picture of this piece, this cast piece broken. Uh, so maybe they should start forging those. I don't know. But they keep casting them and they keep breaking. You aren't supposed to tighten it too much and they recommend in the manual, screw it through the bar and drill holes. So, you know. Kind of our own faults, right? So if you watch my video on getting lumber for free, you know exactly what log I'm going to mill. And uh, it's a very big log, and it's much bigger than the chainsaw bar. So I'm gonna have to get my board set up. Got nails in it too. Over halfway through, and then I could probably finish the cut in the opposite direction, freehand to get it pretty accurate if most of the cut's already through. It's not rotten at all. It's been sitting outside for years. That's what airflow does for you. Very windy. You probably can't hear me at all. But anyway, I think everybody's probably seen the video from Rango Star, right? With this kind of thing. Rango Star did it like this. He put two pieces of wood on there, leveled them, and then put your board on top of that. It's pretty simple. I like simple. Those sitting on all three points, right in the middle and over there. I honestly don't know how you're supposed to use this thing. No instructions is not too helpful. I found those, these threaded holes in the sides and these screws that are extra fit it. So you can kind of tighten it up that way so it doesn't move too much side to side. And that way, you know, it, it's going to be moving around anyway. It's probably just going to be mostly holding it sideways so you don't um, get offline. And it is a chainsaw mail, so it's not supposed to be accurate. If you put that in there, then you're going to have bolt heads sticking out the bottom, which are going to be sliding in your board and messing up your angles. Uh, pretty drastically. I'm just gonna run with it right now and see what happens. Always take your oil. You don't want to run out. Everybody talked about the uh, ripping chains. Like, oh, you gotta get a ripping chain, right? And then, like, everybody in the YouTube videos is like, uh, yeah, it's not really great. So, I'm not gonna use a ripping chain because I don't have one and I don't want one. Don't want to tighten too much. We're not touching anywhere. That's good. I think it's pretty obvious that that was mostly rotten wood in there. It's funny, because it really doesn't look that rotten, but it cut like butter, so there's no way it wasn't very rotten. Uh, yeah, I guess it was mostly rotten, actually. Okay, you can't see anything I'm doing, or saying, probably. Now we're gonna finish the cutout. Well, I definitely see the perks to having a bar big enough to do it all in one cut. So we did hit some actual solid wood in there, and it still cut that easy. It doesn't really feel. Yeah, it's really not that rotten. I mean, that's pretty solid. Now the log is narrower, so we can flip it sideways and make another cut. Way faster than I thought it was gonna be. Don't think I'm gonna be able to move this though. But I gotta drag it over. This last part not quite a thousand pounds. Solid. 800 though. At this point, I'm just hoping to get something out of it. If I can get just a, a, a two foot piece of wood that's like an inch thick, I'll be happy. All in here, this is all it's good solid wood. Okay, same deal. Got set up opposite side so we could flip it backwards on to my stakes again when I cut another side. That is about as fast as I was expecting it to cut. 
we should be using a guide. I'm doing five strokes forwards. I'm sure this is making a lot of people mad because I'm not using a guide. Five stroke sharpen. Let's see if we have any improvement. Hopefully I'm not hitting steel. There may be a nail embedded in there. It actually worked um, pretty well. I'm definitely feeling better about how solid it was. Way sharper. It actually was making shavings at first and now it's uh, a lot of dust. I'm gonna finish up the cut, um, hopefully. Really close if it's not. Uh, can you see any of that? Man, it looks a lot better for me. Probably see more than I think you can. Ah, oh, got some ants. Okay, I'm gonna rip this piece long ways and then cut it in half. I can actually maybe get it on the table saw. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to put rough cut stuff on the table saw. I could use circular saw even and get some just get it closer to square and I could actually use a good bit of this. I really want a slab now because this actually looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna cut a slab, even though it is square on the other side, so it's not gonna be an actually live edge slab. And I'm gonna cut through my blocks because they're already set, so I'm just gonna leave them there. I move my screw over so I'll just cut through that cut the end off and I just got my block back in place. 20 bucks you can mill fairly accurately if you don't have to cut again. The main cut is actually shockingly good. I think Rangler Star said he can make like three cuts or something like that before sharpening it. He was doing like a uh, Ponderosa pine or something like that. You can't do that with oak. Just uh, that's really bright lighting. I'm probably covered in dust too. You can't make very many cuts in the soak on our non-ripping chain. One thing about the ripping chain is the angle's different on the teeth. It's more obtuse, so it's just, I guess they get, they get dull slower that way or something. I don't know. Supposedly it works better. I'm starting to believe it because I don't really want to sharpen this chain every cut, but I'm going to have to. Okay, let's see if it does any better. This one's actually very clean. The cut, I mean, not the board. We got into some of that rot on the inside. We've actually got the pith of the tree right here. I don't really like that, but that'll be, that'd be milled off anyway. 10 fourths, or about two and a half inches thick. Eyeball, I didn't measure anything. Surprisingly not crazy heavy. Okay, I know I'm making a lot more dust than a bandsaw mill makes, because this is a chainsaw mill, but that's like a lot of dust for only three cuts. Okay, we're gonna pull off the boards, flip it sideways and turn into boards. I'm gonna cut off this side real quick because it is rotten to here and like half of it, at least half of it's gone. So I'm just gonna cut it off right there. Some of you, probably not, but some of you might be saying, why are you showing us all this stuff about, you know, rotten logs and all that stuff? Like why are you cutting off the end? And like, that doesn't matter for me. I'm milling clean lumber. So why do I care about that stuff? If I do the nastiest log there is, and this is a terrible log for milling, a bunch of rot you gotta work around. Big old crotch in it, so you gotta worry about that and cut it off. It's big on one end, small on the other end, and fat in the middle. It's a terrible log for milling. If I can mill this log with this tool and with this chainsaw with a 20 inch bar, then you can definitely mill a you know, 16 inch lodgepole pine with a 16 inch chainsaw, probably. Ugh. Of course, most people don't have tractors, so they can't even move a log this big. So it wouldn't matter quite as much. That's not even close to square to that cut. I hope you're not just hearing wind this whole time. Because that would be unfortunate. Eh, this is not really anywhere near square. So we're going to do like a two inch thick piece just to get rid of all this junk. Make sure we have something to mill at the end. The first time I saw this, I thought it was the most amazing thing ever. And I looked into it a little bit and I was like, oh, that's kind of a pain. you got to move your board every time. But right now I'm going to be able to get two boards out of it, I think, before I move them. And it's just really not that hard. Like it's not, that's not your, where your time is. Your time is making the actual cut. So it's really not that big of a deal. For a budget, you just got one or two logs to do. Or maybe if you got a lot of time on your hands, you're doing like a post frame and you want to cut your own timber. This is super cool. I like it. it actually looks, and eh, not very straight, but that's not very surprising because I was so far away at the end. Okay, so I'm beginning to find out there is a certain amount of skill involved. Um, this cut looks better than the last cut. It's just that much more experience, actually. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks actually pretty straight. So it's very important to keep it flat on the board, which I was not careful with last time. Keep it flat on your board. That helps a lot, because this cut looks 
pretty nice actually. So this next bore is gonna be really nice. See, it's a wedge shape, which I mean, it's still big enough, but I'd rather it be nice and consistent. Okay, I'm finally gonna get some dimensions. I'm sure somebody actually cares. 12 inches of good wood, 13 and a half of the pulp fat end. Yeah, it's about the same, 12, 12 and a quarter. Eight inches left of wood to mill through. Nine inches. Big slab is 16 inches wide, but most of that junk is pulp. Ones, 12, yeah, about 12, 10, 11. Just about nine feet on the, almost 10 on the big ones. Quick flexi. We have a little problem. Can't really cut anymore. I, I don't have enough width to get a secure grab. Okay, I cut this with the miter saw so I know it's actually square. So then when I plumb it, it should cut parallel. Of course, we should check this. If you're one of those people who don't sharpen their chainsaws and you just buy new chains when it gets really, 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 really dull, you can do one of two things. You can forget about milling wood with the chainsaw or you can learn how to sharpen your saw, which you should do anyway. That's a different story. I mean, I think I sharpened it three times so far. And why is it so thick again? I keep getting these big slabs. That's okay. Whatever. For these ones, I've done two or three cuts and it hasn't had any trouble. And it seems to be staying sharp. So, just depends on what you're doing. So even in my line of work where I see a lot of dust quite regularly, I rarely see this much dust. That is a lot of dust. I mean, that's like... That is a lot, okay? And it's just, just everywhere. It's like that thick, just. It's like 50 gallons of dust off of that one log. It's crazy. So that took me all day, but I started at like 10 something. I think I did other things before this. If I knew what I was doing, I was faster at setting up. I could probably have milled that in just the morning if I had started earlier. But either way, it's not that bad. So for 20 bucks, I bought this thing and there's literally all the money I spent on it and I still am not positive how this thing's supposed to work. Anyway, 20 bucks, I got eight oak boards. Obviously this is a oak that, if you remember, I pulled out of the woods and thought I could get some lumber out of it. Pretty rotten, it's got a good amount of rot, but I still got eight boards that I can get pretty much a one by eight at least out of for like the entire length and a one by 12 for a good bit of it. I'm pretty happy with that. Big, big slab which actually cracked on me. Some of it is kind of squishy. So if you want to mill some lumber, if you have a big enough chainsaw to do this, if I had a big gas chainsaw, like a Husqvarna Rancher or something like that, I would totally get one of these and mill some logs. It was just fun. I mean, I'm also gonna use the lumber. I don't like oak, but this is, you know, special oak, so I'll like it more. I do not know the brand. It's just the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. So I literally bought the cheapest saw guide on Amazon, and it works. Okay, so here come the disclaimers. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't do what I'm doing. This is not a how-to. This is just what I did. A couple things to keep in mind when you're doing it is make sure it is flat up against your board on the side you're cutting off of and make sure it's sitting flat on the board. That's very important because your blade will go wiggling down there. This one does not cut perfectly square, but if you don't move your boards and you just shift over and cut through your, your guide board like I did because I didn't care about it, then they stay parallel. So most of these are actually pretty parallel. Please comment on this video and tell me all the things I did wrong. I know I did things wrong. All the things I did right, which maybe there's something. Anyway, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.